agencies. What about the residential component? Well, this is more subtle than ever, the residential situation. This is in Palm Beach County, uh, where there's lots of landscaping and lakes, and it shows easily that the problem with the suburb is not necessarily that they're ugly. Palm Beach County is beautiful. It's full of landscaping and golf courses. The problem is that it doesn't work, and in a very insidious way, socially. You see, this system of planning by pods has attached to it uh, a, a segregation by income. Everybody that lives in this pod has paid over $350,000 for their unit. Everybody that lives in this pod has paid about 250 or less for their unit, and everybody that lives in this pod, which is quadruplexes, has paid 100,000 for their unit. What has happened in our suburbs is that for marketing reasons, and which I believe are completely artificial, this, this element of snobism, which is, which is pushed, which is, if you live in here, you're better than everyone else that lives outside. And if you live here, you're better than everyone else. And it sort of pecks on, you know, there's a pecking order all the way down. If you were to offer to build a, a $250,000 house here on this empty lot, this homeowners association would have a major fit. Because the real estate prices are going out. What has been happening is that people are now have a great fear of anybody who isn't exactly their income. We're not talking about bringing the homeless in, you know, from, 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 from downtown Palm Beach. It's someone who has a quarter of a million dollars to buy a house not being permitted to build there. That is completely insidious. The amount, the kind of political fragmentation that is taking place in the suburbs, the dislike and suspicion that people have for each other is making it virtually impossible to go go govern intelligently. And that's being built into this system and it's completely unnecessary. Look at the old system, uh, the, the, basically the American system. This is Georgetown. On this street, you have apartment buildings on both sides of the street, which is to say quite affordable housing. Over on this street, you have townhouses facing each other, which is to say relatively more, more expensive housing. Then on this street, you have big houses, which is to say quite expensive housing. And finally, here on this estate, probably one of the great famous fortunes of America, living in splendid, in, you know, in splendid quarters, all within a very, very short uh, distance from each other and all sharing the same public realm. This is the way we used to do it. Now what's interesting or rather important about mixed-use planning is that it is not just important to have workplaces and shopping places and living places. It is equally important to have a range of incomes living together. Because if you don't, you have to begin importing people of different incomes to work for each other. A typical situation in Palm Beach County, Palm Beach County has to send buses to Broward County to pick up workers to come cook hamburgers and mow the lawn. You know, that kind of thing is going on. It's also going on in Cape Cod. In this system, there's the theoretical possibility that, that the person who mows this lawn can live within walking distance in one of these apartments. And there's another thing that's important. It isn't just important to have the, the, the lower economic classes integrated into the upper. It is equally important to have extremely wealthy people distributed among the neighborhoods and villages. That can be seen all over the Midwest and all over the, North, the Northwest. There are two types of small towns in America. Those that have one wealthy family and those that don't. The ones who don't have that wealthy family have no culture. They're just dead ends. Those towns that have the good fortune of having had one tycoon, one factory owner has, those are the ones that have the beautiful parks and the museums and the, spe and the cultural activities. It is necessary when you have to have a full society with, uh, with, cultural, with a cultural component that there be people of wealth and leisure integrated into the rest of society. Because everyone else is working too hard and doesn't have enough money to actually pursue culture. Only the very wealthy can. So it's important to build all of these things together. In Europe, in any city, not, it's not only in the United States that you find that this is, the, this is the traditional pattern. In Europe, the great dukes, the popes, and so forth, any European city that you see has the palaces next to very humble artisans' dwellings. All societies have been able to integrate by income. They have not been able to integrate foreigners. 
necessarily. There are Turkish quarters and there are Jewish quarters in Europe. But by income, yes, because it is necessary and intelligent, in fact, to integrate by income. It is only now that we're inventing this ridiculous system, an unnecessary system of integration. And what, is the, what do these residential neighborhoods look like from, or neighborhood is to flatter them, what do these residential components look like from the ground? Well, this is the fast food version of the American dream, what we call the Mech Mansion. <laughs> what, is, what is problematic about it is not that there is the house and the lot, because that's fine, that's the American dream. The problem is that it's a cartoon of the American dream because all you get is the illusion of privacy and the illusion of individuality. If this were assembled into a community, you would get both. You would get your privacy, your individuality, but you would always get the community. See, what these give you, they only give you privacy. They don't give you community. What we're proposing is that these single-family houses and their lots be assembled into neighborhoods, that this be enriched and become a special place. What we found according to marketing, marketing studies, is that people welcome both sides. In fact, currently, in, in marketing studies, there are two words that are exceptionally important to people. One is security, of course. The other one is community. They're neck and neck with each other in importance. There's another very interesting study completed by Gallup last year, which uh, analyzed uh, people in metropolitan regions, and they asked them where they would prefer to live. And what they responded is that 36% wanted to live in small towns. Only 25% wanted to live in suburbs. So it's not what people think. You see developers and, and the ULI and these people think that everyone wants to live in suburbs. That's not true. They want their single family houses, but they prefer to live in towns, not just suburbs. Who's providing, suburb who's providing towns? No one. All the developers are like lemmings providing exactly the same product you know, the pod community with the golf course attached. No wonder it is so drastically overbuilt. Very few people are providing towns. The developers that come to us, in fact, are asking for towns because they see it as an enormous unmet marketing niche. Now, how do you provide affordable housing? Uh, traditional towns give you different, um, different strategies. Two are very simple. One of them is do not permit people to build retail unless there is, in some measure, uh, uh, housing attached to it. Because you see, people, merchants don't live above the store necessarily because they're, they're doing too well to do that. Anybody who owns a liquor store can afford the American dream of the single family house. The people who live near or above the store are the clerks and the waiters and the apprentice pharmacists and all sorts of people, in fact, that if they don't live nearby, they have to own cars, which they really can't afford to own because they're not getting paid that much, and they also plug up the parking lot by having to commute there. Why not permit them to live above the store, either in, this, in the shopping center pattern or even in the uh, stop and shop or whatever your local, I don't know whether it's 7-Eleven or Circle K. This is, a, this is a convenience store in the very beautiful and delicate town of Sconset in Nantucket then instead of being considered a blight, as a 7-Eleven would be, it's considered the corner store, perfectly nice place with the people who work there living above. This is Princeton, New Jersey, Palmer Square, built by a developer as a single shot, administered by a developer as a single shot, extremely profitable retail, and very, very desirable places to live. In fact, one of the great secrets is how many people love to live above the store. There's a development in southern New Jersey that uh, had um, apartments above the store. They sold 90 of them in three days. In Miami Lakes, in, um, in Florida, <laughs> all of the apartments above the stores, which is a new, a new development, are rented. In um, Hyde Park Village, in, um, in um, Tampa, the same thing. The apartments above the store, constantly rented. And the same thing in Reston. The only part of Reston that did well were the apartments above the store in Lake Ann. The other way to provide affordable housing, which is the, the healthiest possible way to do it. Permit